Hello everyone. Welcome back. I've got a treat today. This is the new fourth generation Tesla drive unit. Um, I believe it's being produced at Gigafactory Texas and based on what I can tell it's being used as the rear drive unit in the Model Y at this time. It obviously will uh, directly bolt into the Model 3 in the rear position um, and it's an evolution of the first PM SRM drive unit released in 2017 that was the rear drive unit in the Model 3. Um, let's get this bracket off. You can see the inverter. Okay. So we've got a whole new inverter design here. Um, it's much more compact. It's uh, more rectangular and less irregularly shaped. It's got a cast in place high voltage connector and data connector, uh, a new uh, chiller assembly that's got uh, friction stir welded piece, it's pieced together and friction stir welded in there. It might be three pieces. Overall the layout is, is the same, but it's just been optimized. We've got the encoder back here, the same oil pump our stack plate heat exchanger that cools the gear fluid. And uh, underneath here is this big long tube. This is where the cartridge oil filter is. Um, it's no longer a spin on or user replaceable, but it doesn't really need to be replaced for the life of the car anyway. This isn't like an internal combustion engine. So that filter is just there to stop you know, small wear debris and maybe manufacturing debris never needs to be changed. Um, same cast in place mount on the uh, tailpiece there. It, you know, I, I haven't opened the gearbox in this and I probably won't because this is a good unit. I don't want to um, mess up anything in there, but I will open the uh, motor end of it and show you the stator and the rotor. got the same breather assembly though it looks like they've put it up on a pedestal so that if water ever gets back here it can't flow into the gearbox. This is basically just a baffle and it's straight open to the gearbox to allow venting but if if water ever comes up to this height water will roll in there. It looks like they've put a lot less ribs on the castings here you know probably learned a lot and optimized it you know mainly around where the gear stresses are they've got a lot of bracing yeah the inverter's really nice i'll show you that here soon okay well let's uh let's get this open and here we have the insides a lot of uh, similarities between the old design and this one. Same basic resolver design. Um, there's a oil gallery here that uh, squirts oil down the center of the rotor. There's a hole here you can see. We also have some uh, small wave springs to preload this bearing. We have essentially the same, same design of the rotor here. But here's our new hairpin design stator. Very elegant. This is going to be more efficient because it's got greater infill. It's obviously much easier to manufacture because this is automated and it doesn't need all that manual banding that the fine copper wires did on the, the old design. I'm gonna get you close in here. They bring these ends out and then I guess they braze them there. There's the three lugs that pass through the housing down there to the inverter. Much more um, elegant housing. It's uh, you can tell they learned a lot from the housing. It's Smoother, it's got less ribs on it, so less material. They've built in the oil filter cartridge, so it's permanent. 
it goes into this housing here. So it's effectively non-serviceable unless you crack this open. And this isn't easy to do. I had to build another jig here um, to keep the powerful magnets in here from uh, pulling on the stator. And as it is, I still managed to uh, bend a little bit of the laminates, but I think it's okay. You can see uh, the magnets in there. Right there's a magnet. Down in there you can see uh, the other bearing for the intermediate shaft sticking through there. There's uh, some galleries for the oil. Up on top here is where the oil pump goes in. I, have take it, I took the oil pump out. It's uh, full of oil, so I'm just uh, letting it drip in a pan. And yeah, back housing, a little bit different design, but overall less material. You got a differential in there. I'm, I don't think I'm gonna crack the gear case apart because it's probably largely the same, but I definitely wanted to get a, a good look at this hairpin stator. Really cool, huh? And here we have the inverter. This is the uh, new design with a lot of uh, cost downs. We've got a uh, cold plate or a chiller here that's uh, at least uh, two pieces. It might be three. Um, looks like they've done a friction stir weld to attach this to the overall casting. We've got a new molded in uh, high voltage connector and a molded in data connector. Um, overall more compact. Um, looks like an aluminum, silicon, magnesium, a manganese uh, casting here. We'll flip it over. And we've got a much more compact uh, PCB. Um, you can see here we've got the pyro disconnect uh, that uh, blows two of these phase connections out from the motor. And uh, here you can see a little uh, 10,000 amp interrupting current fuse, and this prevents arcing. So when the pyro blows, it, put, it cams this in, and this piece of nylon basically rides up here and cams this one out, breaking the circuit. But if there was you know, current flowing at that point, uh, there would be a propensity for this to arc across. So as soon as this breaks, the fuse takes the load, and... Uh, I think this was like a one amp fuse or something, really small. So the fuse takes the load and then this is an arc quench fuse so it can it can handle the arc break. And we have the same thing over here. So overall, it's very similar to the, the old inverter. We have the same TMS320 dual core TI DSP. I'll put the part numbers in the description. Um, we have a new chip here, which I think is you know, handling the pyro blow and some other safety stuff. Um, this is either custom Tesla silicon or house marked. I'll put the part numbers uh, in the description, but I can't find anything on it. Um, overall, it looks like very similar layout, same gate drivers and stuff. We've got the power supply is a little different. And let's get into here, get this board out. I've already taken most of the screws out of here and I had to solder all the pins for the FET. So uh, obviously I don't want to destroy this so I can't get under these welded bus bars to see what the part numbers on are on the FETs, but I assume they're the same sick FETs that Tesla's been using. Um, this one's fully populated, so there's 24. Um, we've got a molded in place link capacitor, 640 microfarads by, uh, you know, measured it. And uh, just more elegant, more compact, less materials. Um, less fasteners, all that. Let's get to the print circuit board. Let's see if I can uh, zoom in on this a little bit. On the back side, we have uh, this uh, plastic plate, which, uh, among other things, supports the uh, current sensors here. This is basically a 
either a flux gate or a Hall effect current sensor pipe flux gate. Um, there's a core surrounding this that's held in by the plastic, and then you can see the sensor connections here. They're only measuring two phases because they can get the current on the third by the difference between these two. One neat new thing that we're seeing now that I have hadn't seen before is they're using temperature detection for the FETs and capacitor and stuff uh, as infrared sensors. So this is an infrared sensor. Um, it looks like they originally designed it to have three, but they only populated two. Whereas the, the old board had just thermistors in contact with parts. This is actually, um, if you go back to, you can see this little hole they have. That's right on one of the bodies of the FETs in the middle here. So the infrared sensor is pointed right at that and they work best on a black body. So the black plastic kind of does the trick. And uh, yeah, this is pointed another one. Um, this is uh, kind of staked in place. So I can't get it out, but not really much under there. One thing that's pretty different, um, we don't see that big discharge resistor that was made out of a bunch of series parallel uh, SMDs. So they're probably doing discharge through the motor windings or FET or something. Uh, definitely no resistors. Um, really not much else on this side. We've got these little planar transformers um, here. This is basically the, I don't know if you can kind of see that, the, the turns of the transformer are layers of the PCB, and then they have this ferrite that goes through the board. So this forms a, it's a cheap way to do a transformer, and this is probably for isolated power for this circuit, so that each section can have, you know, its own isolated gate drive, because you see one per section. You know, we've got the A section here, B, C, and up here, that, these are the high side and these are the low side. So one for each of those. We've got some uh, isolation. These are probably digital isolators. Um, I'll put the part numbers in the description. And uh, a bunch of uh, test points and things like that. But all in all, this is a really cool evolution. Um, more compact, more evolved, um, lower, to produce, lower cost to produce. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them below. And if you like my content, please subscribe because uh, I can't really afford to do this uh, very often. And most people that watch the videos don't bother subscribing, so I don't get a lot of views. Anyway, everyone take care.